coming from the agile, let's say from the agile world, um, I see the classic project management topics like control and, and measurement uh, going more and more into the background, right? Uh, but we, there is still a lot of topics in agile world we still need to manage. So we need to manage risk, we need to manage uh, resources, we need to manage still the overall uh, cohesion of, of all the products. And here is where I think currently we do struggle in the agile world with getting all these pieces together because it, it becomes really complex. And here is where I think that AI would help us or, you know, the product owners, the project managers on the ground to uh, to, to get a proper picture to monitor better what exactly is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, everyone. That was just to set the scene. And um, I would actually start, uh, and just for the audience as well, uh, just to give you a little bit more background on how we want to organize this further today, uh, because we have also uh, a few questions to you as an as an audience. Uh, so we will have, um, during the discussions, uh, a couple of questions to you via Mentimeter. I will provide you the details. Uh, uh, in a minute, uh, uh, but also uh, just to mention in addition, uh, you can uh, put any questions that you may have um, into the chat window. Uh, and we have at the end of the session, so the last 30 minutes basically, uh, we'll have a Q&A session that we would go through. Uh, so anytime, feel free to uh, uh, put a question into the chat. And for now, I would um, actually ask you, so the audience, um, to have, um, to actually navigate over uh, to Mentimeter, you would have to uh, uh, use that URL here, menti.com, uh, and use that code uh, 54349389. I will put that into the chat window um, as well. Uh, and the question is really like, um, when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence, but in the context of uh, a methodology, uh, what do you think which project management methodology actually would benefit the most from uh, AI? So uh, Agile, uh, this is obviously something that we are talking about today. So um, Scrum, Kanban, Lean, XP, etc. Traditional waterfall, uh, also hybrid approaches obviously uh, could also be an option. Or maybe you think that uh, none of those methodology actually would benefit because AI as such is maybe a methodology in itself uh, or uh, generates a new methodology. That could be an option as well. So I give it a, a couple of minutes for you to respond. Okay, that's quite interesting. Uh, actually, I would maybe ask to the to the panelists, uh, maybe uh, if that for you is of any surprise, uh, if anyone wants to comment from the from the panelists, uh, what do you think? Um, because you see here, obviously, the agile. Nobody really, so far at least, uh, seems to think that uh, agile could benefit from artificial intelligence. Um, it's Nicholas. I guess. I mean. I think it really doesn't matter the methodology top down, down to top down. You know, the, at the end of the day, the benefits, right, that you're going to end up seeing. I mean, I, I you know, in agile, there's going to be benefits. In, in waterfall, there's benefits because um, at the end of the day, you know, you still have tasks to do, et cetera, that you can, you know, uh, you know, predict on, on time or, or get an understanding of the type of projects, the type of work that's being done, regardless if it's agile, waterfall, or, or hybrid. But I find it kind of interesting that people are saying, you know, there's going to be a new methodology, which, you know, may be something that ends up uh, materializing, right? But uh, I think AI is going to benefit uh, every type of methodology, right? It's not really tied to a methodology, it, methodology it, agnostic. It, it's it's noise. Noise. Oh, oh, sorry. 
I, I was going to say it's Lloydy. I, I find it really interesting that no nobody said agile. I, I, I think that reflects possibly the cynicism about applying AI to an agile project management uh, methodology. And, 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 you know, as we get further into this talk, I, I, I'm certainly going to argue that, that, that there are um, opportunity to apply AI um, in an agile environment. But I also concur with Nicholas. I, I'm really intrigued about this new methodology. And, you know, that feels almost like a talk in its own right, as it were. I'm really intrigued as to, to people's thinking behind that, that particular one, Marcus. Yeah, I find that interesting myself. Uh, it's, uh, um... I mean, Drajan here, from my perspective, the agile topic, I mean, if you are honest, there is no project management in agile. Um, it's, it ends up being product management. So uh, from my perspective, I don't think it has a project management. And if we see, can we manage our products with AI, probably that's a yes. But there shouldn't be too much project management in an agile setup from the beginning. So that's maybe why a lot of people don't think there is, you know, there is no project management in agile. And that doesn't make sense to apply AI to something which does not exist. Sorry, Charles, can, can I just understand that a little bit more? So, so, so um, in, in your view, the agile piece, you know, you're saying there's no project management. Are you, I'll just challenge that, if I may. Are you saying there's no plans? There's no budgets? There's no resource plans? Well, all of that belongs to a product, right? So there is no, you don't start, you know, you don't start an agile product. You start with a, with a product, with a product idea. And then you put that product idea into, in, you, you start, you run a demo, right? Or you done a, a minimum viable product out of it. So it's, it's not a real project management approach. It's more of a, you, you try to build a product. And a lot of people don't say that's not project management. And this is where we could argue, well, it is project management, product management equals product management. But, you know, if, if we are honest, there should be project management in agile, but you know, in a in a in a hybrid world where we are, we still do, especially probably in credit suisse, we still have projects kind of as our funding sources for the products in a lot of cases. Yeah, I guess it's a terminology point of view, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And that's why, you know, for me it's management. It's how do we manage our products or projects or whatever. Um Maybe don't don't really look at the, at, the, at the exact word here. Okay. Um, I mean, thanks. I mean, we come back to this. There are some follow up questions, anyways, um, later on. Uh, but I would actually uh, proceed right now with uh, some more specific questions to uh, uh, to Peter. Uh, so Peter, as in the introduction, um, already said you're questioning how AI and machine learning can actually be leveraged to support the agile project lifecycle. So you may fall into this. But seems I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, maybe you can elaborate further on that as well and, and maybe provide some some examples where, of scenarios where you see actually that AI uh, is definitely not able to provide benefit uh, in agile. So uh, let me just clarify one thing. It's not. I'm not saying we can't do it. Um, I'm just not, I haven't seen it yet. Um, so um, I'm sure it's coming. Um, and I think there's an evolution. I think just think that the uh, traditional environment is potentially easier to tackle first. Uh, and the reason I, I say that, so, sorry, sorry. So feed, feed. What was a question there. Right. I suddenly yeah, got some noise. If anybody okay. else could please go on mute, uh, just to make sure that we're not having echoes. Yeah, so um, what I was going to say is that the example I'll, I'll lead with is NPlan. NPlan is a UK startup. Um, some of you may have seen they um, just uh, announced the fact that they just uh, received investment from Google Ventures, GV, um, for 13 million. Yeah. Um, they've only been going for sort of 18 months or so. Um, they're, they're being very successful. The way they've tackled things is they are specialists in large scale um, projects. Uh, and addressing those with AI, and typically the construction and uh, you know, heavy capital uh, investment projects, um, they're all waterfall. Um, and the way they got started um, is they were able to 
access through uh, agreements with various large construction firms, data from Oracle Primavera. Oracle Primavera is a project management tool which is very widely used in the construction industry. And what that provided them was commonality of their data sets. So they're all about building houses and, uh, and other properties, but that commonality is a really strong foundation for AI because AI needs patterns, data patterns to be able to um, work, right? Um, and also it was volume. So it wasn't just the fact that it was very similar data sets, it was also very large data sets. My challenge is that Agile is an iterative process. You know, it's all value driven. Um, and even the requirements themselves evolve very rapidly um, as you enter into a sprint or as you progress through a sprint. Um, and I, at the moment, I question whether there's much opportunity for AI to pick out those outliers and work with those outliers when the, you won't necessarily have that commonality or volume in which it can then use as a basis for ongoing predictions, you know, to challenge risk, to challenge scheduling or, or, or whatever it may be. Um, uh, you know, I, and I run um, agile teams myself. I've, I've done it before. I'm, do, I'm running in one right now, um, both in infrastructure and uh, um, IT infrastructure and software development. And it's um, it's extremely rapid. Um, and I, I just because it's that rapid and it's not necessarily fully fleshed out. I wonder if there's enough data points for AI systems today to be able to pick up and work with that. Um, because we don't even label things the same way. You know, if I ask somebody to do some front-end development about a bit of HTML or CSS or something like that, the wording that goes into JIRA or whatever the ticket system may be is very loosely defined. Um, and that, I think, poses a challenge for AI, which is very much about categorizing information in a very similar way each time before it can actually aggregate that and uh, predict going forwards. So you're, you're saying you would not exclude the possibility that, that AI could be used in Agile, but just not yet, right? It's just not Yeah, I, I've just not seen it. I've been looking at this for a little while um, and uh, I, I, I welcome somebody to, to correct me and point me at somebody that's done it or is working with that, right? Because I, um, like I say, I run these sort of teams and I'd be happy to, uh, to take a look at what they're doing. Um, but I, right. I've just not seen it because, and I think, that's the fundamental problem is, is the data sets. And, um, you know, if you were to take one of my projects and then take a very similar one from any other organization or even within the same organization, even that, I think the data would be so different in the way that the individuals are worded tickets um, and addressed the, the activities that you're not giving the opportunity. You know, humans reading through it, we make a lot of assumptions, we connect the dots um, and, uh, and that's based on experience and understanding of what we're dealing with. We can read through that. Um, I haven't seen anything that can do that just yet. Um, that said, I will say this week I was um, given access to the beta for OpenAI, the GPT-3, which I understand is um, quite a, an exciting uh, algorithm that's um, being, you know, it's, it's slowly coming around um, and being made available to people. So I haven't played with it yet, but... Um, that is promising in, in what it can do with the limited amount of data that you actually have to feed it in the first place. So maybe it's coming. Right. So Lloyd, you have a, you have a different uh, view, I suppose, because you, you're saying that, uh, you know, project method being followed, uh, I mean, are you kind of saying that AI is actually agnostic to, to a project methodology, right? Uh, because you think uh, it's the same data uh, that actually needs to be leveraged, etc. That's my understanding. Can you elaborate on that as well? Yeah, I, I, I can, Marcus. And thank you, Peter. Uh, um, I think it's a really interesting point about can you do it now or not. Um, for, for, for me, the challenge of applying AI to project management is similar, whether you're running an agile project or you're running a waterfall project. The challenge is around what data points and the data associated with that. So um, I'm going to draw on a couple of stories here. Um, first of all, I started working in um, AI and project management. It's well over two years ago now. And I got myself a big meeting with a very large newspaper in the UK. 
um, a conservative one. I'll let you guess which one it was. And I went along to the the um, uh, meet the director of projects there, who basically told me they run an agile environment, but they run an agile environment for me completely the the uh, um, uh, sorry for my uh, uh, language, but the maverick end of agile. So in other words, that on an annual basis for each department, they set a business case. Within that, they, they never had what the list of products were, what the, the, the individual budgets were, what the uh, specific plans were, what the benefits were, and they didn't track it either. They got to the end of the year and hopefully, you know, the business did well and it moved forward and it set the budget again for the following year. Now, in that type of environment where there are basically no data points, of course, it's going to be very difficult to apply AI to project management. However, if you come more towards what I think is, let's, let's for, for simplicity, call it more towards the hybrid model for simplicity, but actually I believe it's part of the agile model as well and start saying, oh, hold on a second, let's start thinking about the data points around, you know, in Jarzin's words, a product, you know, is there a business case associated with it? Okay, if there is a business case, what was the uh, amount of money associated with it? What were the financials um, uh, uh, associated with it as, as, as well? Um, perhaps there's a project plan associated with it. Perhaps within that project plan, there are a number of sprints associated with it, a number of resources associated with that, that, that set of sprints. So before you know it, in terms of the fundamentals of what makes up a project, there's a series of data points that, 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 that are within Agile. I'll give you another story. Going back even further, the first time I came across Agile, I was asked to, to, to create the program plan for um, the BBC's iPlayer program. And off I went, I was, I, was, I was slightly younger than I am now, and off I went to meet the head of delivery for iPlayer. And I said, I need your plan. And his response was, we run an agile environment. I can't tell you what I'm gonna deliver. Now, you know, once I picked myself up off the floor coming from a more of a waterfall background and got my head around what he meant by that, I started gradually getting a project plan out of him. In other words, I started determining how many sprints of what duration, what resources were in his team. So yes, from a, from a scope point of view, it was very difficult, but from a time bound point of view, from a financial point of view, from a resource point of view, there were a set of data points that I could identify with that person. So for me, you know, why I'm saying it's the same challenges, you've got the same challenges around, well, what are the key data points? Um, does your systems, does your PPM systems, does your, your PMO system create those uh, uh, data points and capture those data points in a standardized way? Is that data trusted? How much of that data have you got? Have you just got it on your live projects or do you have a history going back a couple of years? So, so for me, you've got that same challenge. And, and certainly the challenge that we found is all around that, 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 that actually most of this is, is, is a data challenge. And when you unpick that, it becomes not a data challenge. It becomes a, a maturity challenge. In other words, are your processes creating the data points in the first place? Do you need to change your processes to create those um, appropriate data points? In other words, it's a project maturity challenge as much as it is a data point challenge. And that, Marcus, is why I believe if you create the maturity within the organization, right. you can create the data points and therefore you can start wondering how you can apply AI to agile project management. Thank you, Lloyd. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned the data challenges. And that leads me also to to um, uh, to your point of view, Nicholas. I mean, you believe that AI and machine learning technology will be actually able to reduce project failures to less than one percent across all industries, right? Uh, but I mean, we have heard uh, challenges 
and obviously that's also a, a significant change and improvement, right? If we see the, uh, the numbers today in terms of uh, project failure rates to improve that. So could you explain further how AI actually could make such a huge difference for the project management domain and maybe also uh, um, think about the challenges that we would have with uh, yeah, the agile environmental characteristics? I mean, I'm just gonna kind of, you know, say go back a little bit points of that what peter and, and lloyd were saying right i mean obviously to you know reduce it to you know say one percent or less than one percent right there's definitely a roadmap going to that right um i i don't think the methodology necessarily plays a role at the end state right i think you know kind of at the let's say the initial um areas where it's going to get applied is you know potentially more you know kind of waterfall projects at the beginning um or maybe, you know, depending on the organizational maturity, maybe it's going to be agile, et cetera. But I necessarily don't think a methodology is going to be the dictating fact at the end stage, right? Um, and I, I mean, project management, right? I mean, just to kind of put up, I mean, I, I personally don't really like project management, right? Or the terminology or the ideology behind it. I mean, for me, it's, you know, I always look at it from a product perspective, right? Because, you know, project management, you end up building an enhancement of a, of a project or a, a tool or a product at the end, and you run away and you throw it back to the, the operations teams, right? Which it's, it's just fundamentally wrong in my opinion. But I mean, at the end of the day, right? You look at product delivery, right? At, at improving enhancements of a specific product, right? And if you start looking at kind of the different types of things, like the decisions you're making to what actually do, right? That for me, you know, going back of, you know, you know, zooming out and looking at more from kind of a project portfolio management perspective to actually start making the decisions on the things that you should be doing, right? From a, from a strategy perspective, you know, you know, regardless, let's be honest, right? If you're, if you deliver or enhancements onto a product in a waterfall methodology or in an agile methodology, right? The product has its costs, right? So you can start saying, you know, we want to, for example, reduce server costs. You can benchmark that say, you know, we're migrating from, you know, on-prem to cloud, for example, um, you know, the data is available, right? You can calculate the financial benefits of this and it can be driven from the top down from an organizational perspective, right? And I think it's, when we start talking about, like, I think what Peter was kind of saying, like, you know, when you look at it, it's kind of these large scale projects kind of where you, where you get the commonality of data, right? And it's talking about the roadmap, right? The journey of it and the, and the um, let's say the organization's um, maturity, right? And, you know, just looking at from AI in general, getting it applied on, on project management, right? And I think if you look at, for example, like lessons learned, right? You, you, you deliver a project, you know, lessons learned, where, where does it end up going? You, you, I don't know, maybe write a Word document, put some sticky notes, you know, and go celebrate, you know, the go live, right? And that's it. And the, and the, the information is never really used. And all this information can get fed back into the process. So the next time we do, I don't know, a data migration project that, for example, you, you know, these things get picked up, right? That are you know, kind of, it's the same, let's say, kind of mistakes that happen over and over again, right? Unless you've ran 15 or, you know, 5, 10 data migration projects, you kind of know the things to look for. But if you've never done one, you know, you're probably going to make the, the beginner mistakes. But, you know, AI, you know, can detect these patterns, see the tasks that you have planned if it's a waterfall or if it's uh, agile. It's, I think it's completely irrelevant. It's specific tasks that you have to deliver and, and they have to be scheduled in, in more or less in a certain sequence or, you know, have to be done before a certain thing can happen. And, and there's going to be risks associated to that. And I think yeah. I mean, if yeah. you look. The yeah. only thing is just, you know, that, is... that, you know, in, in agile, obviously it's rather people focus, at least that's always said, right? It's more flexible, you know, the, the uh, self-organizing element that basically also plays a role in agile. I think that's maybe Drajan, you can comment on this, you know, as an agile, expert you know from credit swiss uh i mean would you argue that um uh with agile or for agile um ai would be i mean there would basically be a challenge for ai to actually make an impact there in agile projects because of the more people focused or team focused or self-organizing element of of agile i think there is points uh, where you say the self-organization uh, and, and also the when you start scaling, it's where the self-organization gets to its limits, right? Um, you end up having more data points to, to Peter's and, and Lloyd's point. You end up having much more complex environments. And I think where AI could help is 
uh, not just looking only at Jira, for example, but also if, if you look down the line, uh, when we get it's about software, you know, you look into into Strira, Crucible, SonarCube, you can use multiple data source. And I mean, currently we're trying to do that more in a manual way in order to figure out where are the risks of the of the various teams or where are the risks for our entire big uh, structure or for our architecture solution. And this is probably where AI could help us to highlight some of the issues in order to, to catch them ahead of time. Also, when it gets to automation, I mean, um, test automation currently it's 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 a very cumbersome very manual process right um could some of that be solved with ai uh you know replace the the nation with 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 some robots in the background and maybe working about test robots and stuff like that but i think this is where ai would have help the agile product management in a uh, definitely if you know, if you have all the data, if you have uh, well, well thought through structure, right? And I think this is this is probably this might be uh, some of the topics in the future where AI will help us. I mean, especially, well, especially in banking, banking, right? And, right, and, and credit, credit Swiss, Swiss. Uh, yeah. I, suppose, I suppose. Sorry, there seems sorry, to be an echo of someone. Echo. Everyone could be a, go on mute, please. Um, I mean, so uh, especially in banking, right? So Credit Suisse uh, should be no different there. Um, I mean, I, I wonder how far you can actually go with with agile, right? Because you have on one side usually the the more extreme agilists, right? So like like you know, you go like uh, all the way uh, fully agile or apply safe or anything of these uh, methodologies and basically apply it by the book for. Um, and on the other hand, especially in banking, you have then like regulators who actually, um, yeah, demand quite some, quite some strict and uh, uh, um, let's say, yeah, um, mandate, right, uh, to to actually follow certain processes when it comes to project management, how you run projects, how you uh, should report, how you should track, etc. And which mm -hmm. seems to be quite, uh, I mean, not really matching with the agile nature, right? So how would you actually uh, balance this? And at, and at the same time, how AI could then actually play a role in this picture? Mm -hmm. I think in the past couple of years, and I had a lot of discussions with regulators, uh, they starting to realize that actually agile helps them or helps having better outcomes from a regulatory perspective. So they realize that the products are better managed. They realize we have much better visibility on the progress. They realize that, um, that the delivery is much more, let's say, consistent, right? In Waterfall, uh, we always promise them, you know, everything's going to be delivered by December 31st, and then, then you know, it's going to be in great quality and everything. but it never happened, right? Because we ca you cannot predict the unpredictable. And this is where I think even the regulators are starting to realize that um, you cannot manage some of the things. And what we try to is to manage the risk. And managing the risk with an agile methodology is much easier than trying to manage it in waterfall because it's right there. You, you, know, you go live very frequent, so you see the risks pop up very, very early in the process. You see the issues very early in the process. So the regulators uh, more and more actually starting to like Agile. Yeah. So, so these guys, yeah, I think, yeah. are, are coming to our side and saying, well, you know, actually, it's it seems to be working for them. But does, doesn't that depend on the type of project, Jarzen? I mean, you know, um, I, I personally believe there's a place for Agile, but there's a place for Waterfall and a place for somewhere in between as well. You know, so so just as an example to paint the picture, if I'm building, a, you know, a, a, an airport, I'm not, I'm not going to be using, sorry, I'm unlikely to be using an Agile method for the overall build. There may be, I don't know, build of the booking system, that you possibly want to use an agile method. So for, for, for me, it's horses for courses in terms of methods okay. as well. No, fully agree. Because 
we've built, you know, an airport 500 times already. So we know how it works. But nobody builds a piece of software 500 times in a row. That would be stupid, you know, because you can just copy it, right? So a piece of, of software is always unique. So there is no way in repeating it. And this is also why the whole industrialization of IT never worked, because every piece is an artwork and you cannot industrialize art, right? And this is why, yes, for some topics, you know, infrastructure, rollout of Windows, you know, 22 or whatever, go for waterfall because it's, you know, exactly what you've been doing. But if it's, you know, if it's a new piece of software, a new piece of art, you cannot use the same approach which you used, you know, for the previous piece of art, unless you, you know, so, unless you copy pasting. So, so my argument would be at certain levels you can. So if you know certain features about that product, I don't know the type of technology it's using, the type of team that's been applied to it, then perhaps you've done something similar in the past. And if you're a large organization, perhaps you've done something similar lots of times in the past. Or mm -hmm. if you're in an industry level, maybe there's lots of software companies that you could pull that data together. So, 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 so uh, you know, I, I don't think today's technology is anywhere near the detailed level of, of predicting, you know, uh, uh, um, some of the points you're making there. But I, I personally think if you then take a step back and say, well, what level are you managing that? You know, so if you're level, if you're managing, you know, on Nicholas's point more at the portfolio level, I, I certainly still believe that you can apply AI to agile environment. I mean, I think kind of going to, to Drajan's point, I mean, maybe the software, the functionality of the software is, you know, let's say unique in a, in a way, right? Because, you know, it's in-house built or something like that. But if you're buying software, you know, or migrating onto whatever a SaaS solution or something, I mean, you still have to implement it or onboard onto it, right? Data migration. I mean, data migration from one system to the next, generally, you end up with the same kind of problems over and over and over again, right? Um, or if you look at kind of, um, you know, let's say trading platforms or something like that, high frequency where there's a lot of activity, you kind of run into the risk is, is you know, in, in, in certain areas, it's, it's, it's always there, right? And I think if you if you just take a step back, right? I mean, you know, obviously when we look at from a roadmap perspective, right? I think there's a lot of components, regardless of what type of project you're running or product you're building, there's a lot of consistent components that you can kind of use the historic information to start predicting or raising potential risks to, to people, right? And I think, you know, talking about regulators and if, you know, if I'm looking at, you know, AI, I, I believe, you know, the, the, the core components are really, you know, into which projects or which enhancements do we invest money into? What do we need to do to make sure that you can basically, you know, uh, realize the, the strategic goals of an organization, not short term, but long term. The other thing is, um, you know, making sure that your the, the product that's being delivered, that you're getting the most, let's say, bang for your buck, right? And on, on, on the other side, I think there's, you can create the, you can reduce the risk and, and you can, how do you say, build the decision tree, if you want to look at it like this, because I always look at the project, there's a bunch of decisions being made, right? If you'd have all the information at your fingertips, you could you'd maybe have made the decision slightly different, right? So if you look at it, like so the decision tree that you would go through in a journey of a project, right? Risks that can creep up in three months might be root cause of a decision you made two months ago, right? And you can, with this, let's say, you start kind of predicting some of these things that, that are gonna be coming up and making people just think maybe, Maybe it's a, uh, not the most intelligent suggestion at, at the point in time, but over, over time, you're, you're potentially raising issues or, or raising things to people that, okay, I actually have to maybe think about that because that's, if I make this decision or I made this decision, that could be the, the knock-on effect. So I have to make sure I have this under control at that point in time, right? And I think this is, you know, so if you look at it from risk and decision-making, I think that's kind of the area where you're going to end up seeing the most benefit, right? I mean, besides kind of automating the, the boring old tasks that you have in project management, but I think it's really in that area that's going to be the most benefit. I mean, because honestly, right, I mean, most organizations, you know, you budget on an annual basis because you got to, you know, disclose your financial numbers, you got a plan. Um, 
and as this is a fundamental result of that, you, you, you start assigning uh, budgets to, let's say, teams or products, right? And, and you get into this turning mill, right? And it, it's, it, at the end, you know, we're relatively good at managing the numbers, hitting our numbers, so our, our shareholders are happy, right? But at the end of the day, right? I mean, the risks and, 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 the, and the decisions being made to get the most out of what we're investing is I think that's what's getting lost. And that's where I think AI is actually gonna really provide the benefit, right? Is in, 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 that, in that space, right? But uh, speaking about this, I'm just looking at the chat. There's an interesting comment uh, from Marco Steidel. Um, he thinks that, uh, that AI and agile projects uh, might would increase the quality of the project output and speed up the project duration by a few sprints. But for traditional predictive projects, the impact would be much higher in getting the risk to fail late in the project reduced. Would you agree on this, Peter? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, is, is the first answer. Um, would increase the quality of the project, but not for traditional. I, you see, I, I struggle with this still. Um, I think there were some really good points made um, earlier. Uh, Nicholas was just talking about um, the portfolio level, um, which I think, I think is that wrapper. Oh, I'm getting an echo now. Is that me? Um, there was uh, there's the wrapper sort of level, which you know, when I've looked at um, portfolios where we've been running projects of I don't know 200 to four five hundred uh, con consecutive projects. And things like cloud migration. So I've been involved in a few of those. Yeah? Um, so they've all got the same goal. Um, but every application, um, as Jason was just saying, every software is different. Um, but the idea is to host it in a cloud provider, uh, maybe a private cloud offering, a public one, maybe a SaaS solution, whatever. We're going to go from on-prem to cloud. So every everything is the same, but everything's different at the same time. It depends. It's the granularity. Yeah, so it's, it's the stage we're talking about. So with all of those projects, um, we had the same milestones, you know, 30, 35 milestones, which were common for every project. And at that layer, we can look at buffers. We can look at um, what stage the different projects are at. We can see what things are moving into constraints uh, and, and deadlocking. Um, but there was a lot of flexibility on the individual project managers and the project teams to manage the projects themselves. Um, through Agile or Waterfall, um, as long as they met the objectives and they reported against the higher level milestones. So in those scenarios, the AI could help at that portfolio and steering level, but the again, the, the commonality, the, the volume of data at the lower level would be very varied. So the, the challenge is at what stage you plug in and address with intelligent systems as opposed to humans feeding into a, a higher level. So it's a slightly different um, scenario, but um, does that help um, answer that at all? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I have I mean, actually uh, an interesting point, which I just recently read about, uh, you know, when it comes, I mean, I'm just switching over to this uh, uh, more agile projects or away from the portfolio level there. Uh, but I, I have actually read that a couple of years ago, there was um, this uh, institution, the Agile Alliance. They have used AI algorithms to, to create actually a virtual Scrum Master platform uh, and made some experiments around this. Now how yeah, to use AI in Scrum, right? And, and this virtual scrum masters and used AI to collaborate with team members, product owners and stakeholders. So basically, yeah, took over kind of the role of a scrum master, right? I mean, would you see this as a scenario of applying AI to agile projects where, you know, AI practically facilitates uh, scrum ceremonies and okay. collaboration and this sort of thing? Only in the uh, movies. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Peter, come on, come on. <laughs> Hollywood on. might be able to do it, but um, I, I'm still a skeptic at the moment. For, for, I think we're away from that. Yeah. From, from my perspective, Marcus, and, and Peter, you're right to be skeptic today, but the, the, but the question is, when is tomorrow? You know, I often say, well, you know, five years ago, could we have dreamt about self driving cars on the roads? Yeah. You no, know, they, they, they're coming now. The technology pace is so rapid at the moment. I think 
you know, I, I agree with both Nicholas and Peter in terms of in the short term, maybe the benefit is is at more a portfolio level than than in the minutiae of project planning in an in a, an agile sprint or you know a day within a sprint as it were um but but, but i i i take a step back and say and these are general statements you know if i'm recruiting if i'm a recruiting manager and i want to recruit a new product manager i i look at what experience they have and, and I see whether they've, they, they've delivered products and they've delivered them and they've delivered them successfully. And if so, I want that person. Now, if I can take that knowledge of that person and bottle that knowledge up along with, I don't know, two dozen super duper product managers, then that's going to give me a lot of power. And, and that's the point is, is you know, we, we can no longer just think about ourselves as individuals. You know, with the, with the power of AI, you can start bottling that knowledge across multiple individuals, multiple projects. And as the data sets get bigger, not just half a dozen product managers, but maybe 100 product managers, 1,000 product managers, 10,000 product managers. And that's why over time, yes, Peter, you're right to be cynical today, but in five years time, when we have that knowledge across that amount of product managers, that's why you will really be able to apply it. So. I would say, don't give up. Um, I'm very much on board with <laughs> building for the future. Um, yeah. it, there's, a, there's a saying from where one of the venture capitalists in the UK, um, I think there's a, a few of them have caught onto it now, which is the, the idea of practical science fiction. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. It's about the, you know, where do we want to be? You know, I, I've watched the Iron Man series of films, for example, love the whole idea of the De Jarvis. Um, you know, uh, the, one of the things about um, Horizon PPM, my project management tool, is that I have an Alexa tool, so you can actually ask it the current status of uh, uh, the, the project in real time. If the information's there, it can provide it to you via voice. Um, and I think, well, world first, we. Um, but that, that's, you know, that, that's a little bit of a, um, a showcasing thing. It, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use it in a production environment right now. But it's, it's that concept, you know, we have to aim for the moon, you know, because I think it will happen. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm teasing a little bit about the scepticism. It, it will come. Um, you know, look at the advances. You mentioned about self-driving cars. There's so many different things, you know, it, on Top Gear the other night, they had the guy with the uh, jetpack racing the car. You know, it's sort of <laughs> there's lots of this sort of stuff coming up, which we wouldn't have seen 10, 15 years ago, right? So, um, but it's uh, yeah, the, I think it's it's a matter of finding the battles, finding what does work, and I think a lot of us are in that experimental mode at the moment, um, where we can get the most benefit today um, and build for the future as well. Um, there is some really good work. I know you you guys um, have got products um, uh, that are very successfully working in this um, environment already um, and hats off to you for, for achieving what you've achieved. Um, and I th but I think we're very much in the, the thin end of the wedge. It's, it's very much about early adopters right now. You know, I looked, I've looked around uh, the environments and seen who's doing what. Um, it's probably, you know, 600 different project management tools we could uh, find if we went Googling them uh, long enough, but there's probably less than a dozen uh, you know, that are actually doing anything about AI, at least publicly. Um, and I think, you know, that's re really encouraging to see, you know, uh, the data science being brought into this arena um, because projects are getting harder and bigger. And there's more pressure. Um, there's more money going into projects. Um, but as every project by definition is unique, um, it needs as much help and support as it can get, right? I mean, I just to kind of add, I mean, I think the emotional part, right, of let's say product management, of people management, that that's never going to be, I think, a machine. I think that's always going to be a person, right? I mean, if I if I look at kind of just the, the question from Marco, right, and I think about, I mean, look, this is, there's a roadmap, right? I mean, you know, you're going to pick off, you know, the, let's say the low hanging fruits with the technology um, and it's and it's going to be scaled kind of over over a period of time, right? And the, the things, you know, like when we get into conversations with any client, you know, the whole conversation starts on, you know, let's say on the data, right? What, what do you have available, right? Because the fundamental point is you've got, you know, and, I, and I'm just kind of talking about like the iceberg, right? Kind of scenario, right? You've got the, the part of the iceberg that you actually see. So, you know, the no and no one, you maybe see, you know, a couple, you know, meters under the water and you see, okay, I know there's something there. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that, that iceberg goes down, you know, about three times as far, right? And 
there's a lot of data, for example, and this is like the point of lessons learned, right? I mean, the lessons learned being played back into the project management is probably, in my opinion, one of the poorest things that's is being done. We, we, you know, we deliver something, but we actually don't really learn about what we did. It's just the experience that we, that we personally gain or from a colleague from having a conversation with them or, you know, whatever, uh, a team that you kind of exchange some ideas. And that's kind of where, where the lessons are. Saying. It can be scaled to an industrial level, right? I mean, we're talking about, you know, the, the repetitive tasks or the type of tasks being done in agile or whatever in banking world, insurance world, whatever it is. I think it's all repetitive, right? It's just a matter of the roadmap of, of, of onboarding. And if you look at just taking a further step back and looking at organizational benefits, right? Each organization has its own, let's say, challenges or, or, or goals. And, and it, there's going to be a benefit in a slightly different area, right? Every single time, right? It's never going to be, you know, this is the benefit and everybody's going to get the same kind of benefit. In certain organizations, you might get it more on the um, being able to calculate, for example, critical path, making sure that things aren't forgotten about. Um, but in other organizations, right? I mean, when you're talking about, let's say like you're, you're a massive, you know, logistics company or something like that, or a company with a lot of different local installations uh, or user groups of, of software platform, you know, deployment, I don't know, to India or to, I don't know, Bangladesh or to uh, Canada or the US or Mexico, there's cultural differences. And, you know, for example, you might have that country that always takes two months to get a sign off just because the people that are involved, et cetera. And, in this area, you can, I mean, the AI is going to know that. So you as the project manager don't even necessarily think about, oh, it's going to have to take too much. That's already recommended in your plan. You know that, okay, I'm going to have to start engaging these guys at an earlier point in time. All this information could be provided to you, right? And it's, I think the benefit at the end of the day per organization is going to be slightly different, right? Um, but the point is, I, I don't think it's going to be project management itself. I think it's going to be, it has to be front to back. So it has to go from, you know, the, the decision on investing into which products and, and what the strategic goals are all the way down to the actual delivery organizations, right? And, and then you're going to be able to, you know, if you have the data, you can, for example, see the, the story of the user story of a, a user in a, in a tool. And you can say, okay, you know, it's three clicks instead of 50 clicks, right? It takes two minutes instead of 10 minutes, right? But the question I would have, and maybe have to, to Lloyd, because, you know, you, you said uh, kind of, uh, you know, data points are basically the same, you know, in, in agile process, I mean, agile is obviously more like a lightweight methodology, as I said before, right, very team and action. So you have this self organization concept, right, where, where people just, uh, yeah, get together in a room and, 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 and work things out, right. So there's obviously less documentation, meaning less data, at least data that actually can be captured by an algorithm, right. Uh, and, and so it's all kind of, um, yeah, uh, as I said, self-organizing, and it's more more the emphasis on human interaction. How would you actually capture this data, right, or this information to make actually sense out of this, and and build this basically this this picture and all these data points and find those patterns, right, across uh, projects. Yeah, well, it goes back to you know how many data points. You know, if if you use Pisa's example of N plan, then you can't apply end plan the way they're applying it to the agile environment because you know they're looking for thousands and thousands of data points and in and in an agile project sorry Charleston, in an agile project <laughs> there are less data points but there certainly are some and the question is how many data points do you need to be able to create a a, a prediction model um, and can I, can I just say, Lloyd, one of the things that when I, I spoke to, I got to speak to Dev uh, at one of his talks, um, he's the CEO of Mplan, uh, and the question I had for him was about um, where they, how they train their models and, and how they did what they did. So what they've got with their models is the ability to predict uh, risk and scheduling challenges, right, on large scale construction. What they don't have is the ability to understand why. I, th I think it's really interesting that the, 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 the why. No, no, obviously, that depends on how you build the technology. I'm not a technologist, but I do understand a little bit that the, the, the way that some of these uh, 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 machine learning algorithms work, that you don't know the why. I, I actually think that, that the more... That was a little while ago, and he may have addressed that, but that was certainly I don't, I don't one of his challenges. I don't think can address it, Peter, is my understanding. You know, that it's, it's within the black box of the algorithm. I think more interesting is 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 the the uh, 
the impact. So you predict an outcome is awry. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. What is your intervention strategy? Well, then you're starting to touch into another part of, of AI and, and perhaps automation and all of those sorts of stuff. Because, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. You're then augmenting the human to make better decisions. So you're not only just predicting what the outcome is, you're telling them, well, these are the areas of risk. These are the areas that perhaps you want to go and address. Um, so, 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 so I, I, you know, I think people get obsessed with the outcome of the, 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 the why the technology is telling you, but that goes back because we're in early days. I don't ask the car why it's, why it's, you know, doing this or ask the pilot of the plane why it's doing that. I just trust it, you know? So, 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 at the moment, well, I think that's back to Nicholas's point about the people side of things as well, right? You know, I think, you know, the analogy I gave earlier about the Formula One, you just use a car and a, a, a line yourself. You know, for me personally, uh, dealing with project delivery, uh, at whatever level I've been dealing with it, I don't know what the number is, but probably 50% of it is about psychology. It's about dealing with people. Yeah. What I'm looking for out of my project management tool is to give me mm-hmm. intelligence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not necessarily um you know prescriptive but you know that dashboard of this is the hot points this is what you could do it's still with me to drive it it's still with me to engage with the the stakeholders because the the systems today are probably not going to appreciate that i'm going to have to now have a difficult conversation with bill because it's his budget or it's you know he's going to have to work overtime or whatever it may be it's just data sets um and that takes time to build up that that human aspect of the the human intervention uh side of it but i i I think we're going to get that dashboard yeah i i totally agree peter but again i would go back to depends on your time horizon because today those systems are starting to appear to augment you into enhanced decision making i think then the step forward is is where do they then impact on the you know, the human within the project delivery process. Where does that stop and start? It gets blurred and more blurred. And I think over time... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be I great. Would, right? I would mm-hmm. possibly challenge, Nicholas, that, that you know, where the, 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 the human bit might be taken away more so. So, for example, on a smaller project, if it's just a, a, a decision tree of a project, you know, uh, uh, um, do we have the budget? Yes or no. Have we got the resources? Yes or no. Yeah. Uh, have we done it before? Yes or no then possibly you don't need a human as part of a much smaller, simpler project. And I think, again, that will be the beginning of it. So for me, it's your time horizon. You know, maybe I I see these things more longer term. I certainly think in 20 years, the the automated robotic project manager will appear in much more spaces than the smaller projects. But, you know, that's, you know, that's me trying to guess the future, if you like. So, so I don't um, think you're wrong. I think, you know, I mean, I think, very quickly, Peter, isn't it? You yeah. know, I think you know the way I think about it is AI, the, the the abbreviation of AI. I look at it in different ways. Is you know, the the first stage for me is actionable intelligence AI, not artificial intelligence. And what I mean by that is is giving me that dashboard, giving me act, taking the data. You know, if you if you look at um, it's probably on Wikipedia and various other places that uh, from data to inter- uh, intelligence to knowledge to wisdom um, type pyramid, um, um, you know, you know th- we have lots of data points we deal with as project managers, regardless whether it's agile or, or, or waterfall. Um, it's taken that and given it to me so that I can, I know what's important to right now, you know, what's critical, what's going to make a big impact, um, what's easy, what's complex, those sort of things are what I'm looking for, uh, to drive. Uh, and, you know, I w- will, confess right now from horizon ppm you will see some screenshots on this coming soon for some of the development where we're doing so a bit of a plug there um but the um so actionable intelligence is that first piece but that also you've got analytical intelligence looking back at what's gone before looking at the historical side of things you've got algorithmic intelligence the sort of if then uh, logic um which is sort of the next stage up before you even get into artificial intelligence which does that you know that block black box of um i've i've learned from the patterns and now i can predict with a, a significant um statistical probability of re- reliability um you know so there's there's different stages of ai so there's, there's at least four that i'm playing around in with my head as to what that looks like as we go forward as we evolve these solutions yeah and just- you know, I think it always comes back to the three points, right? I mean, 
you got to be able to sense that something's going wrong, right? You got to, after, from just a tooling perspective, you have to be able to understand what the trigger for that was. And then you have to know what the options are, right? And I think kind of just thinking it from that perspective, you know, regardless which project, you know, if you look at it from a product view, et cetera, I think that's where the main kind of impact is going to be, right? And then, you know, also in the decision of which things actually to do. But if I look at like, you know, let's talk about, you know, kind of like say agile or what you were saying before Drajan about, you know, the product view, right? I, I think, like I said before, I, I'm not a fan of calling projects or having change teams that come and then disappear and drop things on operations teams. I think it's, you know, you're just building yourself a, a, a nightmare, right? Um, but I think from an organizational perspective, right, there's a lot of work to be done on the organization of the data, making sure that you're, you're capturing things, right? Um, I don't think it's necessarily a terminology uh, problem, right? Because, you know, with NLP, et cetera, you can, you know, can categorize and categorize it, you know, relatively loose forms. Um, but it's going to be to transform more into a kind of a product view. And I think it's going to, it's probably going to become more prominent, I, I would say, in the next couple of years. And then the next component is going to be that the, the whole data kind of piece, right? To make sure that you're, you're capturing things and that's going to really enable, you know, the roadmap for, for AI to be kind of applied, um, you know, say across the board, right? I mean, there's certain definitely projects and organizations that are further than others, but I think, you know, um, it's going to be the future, right? It's, it's, sorry, just sorry, conscious, conscious of time. Um, we are almost uh, to the hour and we want to give some room for Q&A as well. Just before we do that, um, I would just like to ask the audience to uh, hand, um, navigate over to menti.com again. Uh, so um, if you could use that URL again, so menti.com and use that code 5434-9389. Uh, for more what you heard, or maybe, I mean, obviously could debate for hours, I think. Uh, but do you think yourself uh, that AI can be can make some impact and can be effectively applied to agile projects? I give it again a few minutes. Oh sure, um, doing that a um, little bit of a, a joke for you. There was, uh, I think it's back to Marco's point a little bit. There, there was uh, the couple that were driving to a holiday destination. And uh, they got themselves a bit lost. It's the days before sat naps, and they couldn't really figure out how to get to this new holiday destination. So they, they saw a chap in the, in the field, and they pulled over. I said, um, we're trying to get to this place. We can't find our way. He turns around and says, hmm. oh, if I was going there, I wouldn't start from here. And I think that's true of where we are with some of our... Um, AI applications over the top of project management. Sometimes we have that dependency on data, which just doesn't exist. If you take a look at um, IT, the tech environment, where they have um, incident tickets, problem tickets um, in service now, or whatever their choice is, um, and a problem is logged, it's passed around the support teams, and at the end of it, quite often what happens is that ticket gets closed because it's been resolved. Great. But there's very little information often goes into that ticket to say how it was closed and what whether the impact that the individual that raised it in the first place was actually the impact that was realised later on. And I think we have that same problem with, with uh, projects. You know, if somebody puts a, a risk or an action on a board, once it's addressed, it gets closed. And that gives doesn't give the AI systems the opportunity to learn because it doesn't tell it that yeah. actually that risk that you had as a, a nine out of 10 risk um, in terms of importance actually turned out to be a two out of 10 because nobody goes back and updates that. And that I think is one of our blind spots for um, using AI over project management. And I, you know, I think it's not just with uh, project management. I think it's other, uh, other areas as well. So to coming back to Marcus, uh, Marco's point in, in the chat, you know, the thing to look for to be able to leverage AI will always fall back on data. Um, and it's having data that not just starts a story, but also ends a story. 
Um, so that that would be my feedback on that one. And I think it's less. It's going back to my point about lessons learned, right? Which I think is yes. You know, I think from my point of view, you've just very articulately said garbage in, garbage out, haven't you? Yes, but it's, it's a, there's an opportunity there because what is potentially garbage is just unfinished, actually good input. Um, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a discipline that people need to ad adopt to say when you close something, you provide the full uh, basis of why it was closed. Now that's that's a, an overhead that is not particularly attractive in some scenarios, right? And, and, and not particularly managed uh, at all well or become shelfware. So, so, so that's my argument why that actually you shouldn't run before you walk. You should start with what are your key data points? Have I got the processes that, that, that create those data points in a trusted fashion? Do I control those processes? Do I control the data that's created? Um, so which is, you know, back to the very beginning, why I say it's completely related to the maturity of the, the, the organization and how they manage projects. You know, so the more data points you're trying to capture, the more, more uh, you are open to abuse of your processes. And if you haven't got basic processes in the first place right, well, how on earth can you trust the data that's been created out of thousands of lines of project plans? You know, if you don't even know when the business case was, was agreed, you know, as an example. Anyway, there you go. Okay, um, I mean, I would open it to Q&A. Uh, I'm maybe asking Marco directly because uh, obviously there was some feedback on his comments. Uh, if I mean, and feel free to unmute yourself, Marco, if that uh, answers your your question and the or comments in the chat, or if you have any follow up to this. Yeah, hello, Marco here. Um, so first of all, thank you for all of your answers. Um, actually, uh, of course, data is the key for everything to get implemented uh, in, in regards to AI. Um, and uh, following a roadmap is definitely a good approach. Um, I'm, I was a little bit more looking for what exactly from the um, enterprise preparation would be required from, from uh, compliance rules and from, from the setup of all non-technical uh, related stuff um, would be required to, to be able to make use of an AI tool for HR projects. So you're, you're basically looking more for, not from a technical perspective, but more from kind of an organizational perspective um, the things that would have to be in place. I mean, I think the, from an organizational perspective, right? I think you, there has to be a certain view on, on the way you run things, right? And I think, um, projects, I think would be wrong. I think you have to transform to a product view personally, right? As, as one step, right? I think the, the, the next component is, um, you know, to, to leverage and really start increasing the benefits, you're going to have to look at, um, I mean, you're going to have to take employee data, right? So you're going to get into some restrictions on, on that side. So you're going to have to kind of pave the way for, um, let's say, the technology to, to profile, for example, you know, resources, right? And, and I guess, I mean, you can say if this is good or bad, right? But I think at the end of the day, right, you know, if I take whatever, four days, um, to produce an output that Drajan does in one day, right? Um, you know, you might initially say, well, that doesn't look too good, right? But then when you, you go into the testing, et cetera, you realize that Drajan stuff has uh, twice as many bugs as mine, right? Um, so it's kind of, you know, you gotta look at it, I think from, from that perspective, you gotta have the, the employee data you need access to, you need to be able to do the profiling. You gotta have, from an organizational structure, you gotta have the view of, um, of, on products and in another perspective, I think you've got to really have, you know, senior management um, engage and you've got to really look at it from a top down perspective that, you know, the technology, it has to be implemented from an end to end perspective, right? So you've got to be able to clearly articulate what your strategies are um, and, and make it, you know, somehow, uh, let's say a tangible 
uh, strategy or, or target that you're trying to reach to, I don't know, reduce infrastructure costs. So for example, reducing cost or um, increasing efficiency of, I don't know, front office employees when they're using their, their tools by monitoring um, how many clicks they have, for example, all these types of things, right? I think that's kind of, if you would, if you'd ask me kind of where I think the, the bottlenecks would be, right, from an organizational perspective and what you'd have to kind of pave prior to, um, let's say, going down the path of implementation, right? I, I'd make it a bit simpler than that, Nicholas. In my mind, it's having a data first strategy. So, so you know, data is controlled. To have a data first strategy, what are your key data points? You have to ask that question. How are they produced, et cetera? So, um, certainly, yeah, sure. certainly the organizations we work with, those ones that have had that data first strategy in place for the last two years, they're the ones that are really getting into prediction now. The other ones, you've got to go through that whole pain of creating the processes, creating the, 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 the people and the knowledge and the training to create the data in the first place. So it's back to Peter's point, if the data doesn't exist, the data doesn't exist. So the quicker you put in a data first strategy, the quicker that you will get to the benefits of AI. I mean, Drajan, from your perspective, right? Since you work, you know, you're, you're, you're in a large organization looking at this stuff. I mean, where do you see the challenges of, of implementing AI in, for example, Credit Suisse or something like that, or in the financial services industry in general? I think challenges always happen when it gets to decision making, right? I think currently, we would be ready to implement AI when it gets to repetitive tasks. And I think this is where everybody more or less agrees. So probably the next big thing in AI is going to be replace all the PMOs with, with AI, because most of the PMO task is kind of like the providing data, providing, you know, gathering stuff, putting things together. Provide, and this is where maybe AI could come in. But when it gets to the real art of project management, of decision making, here is, I think, we're not ready yet. I mean, if you look at AI in, in automatic driving, I mean, Tesla can drive if the roads are fine, right? But as soon as it starts snowing and, and the, the white lines are not visible anymore, it can't anymore because then you really need the human decisions. But so isn't AI all, always about decision making? It's Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, AI is not, I mean, it's part of it, but I mean, it's not the same. It's not equal like robotics, just automating things, right? Because that's that's not really intelligent, right? Uh, because you basically just run a script, right? So, I mean, uh, AI is really like intelligence where it should simulate human behavior and ultimately in project management, that is decision-making. Uh, and that's basically the core or the crux of it, right? That when we apply AI, AI. To, to project management, it means we take decisions, right? Or, or at least uh, we get support in decision making, right? I think decision making is still with 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 people, but we get support from from AI algorithms, right? I mean, maybe going back to Marco, I mean, did that answer your question a little bit better? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, there were very good uh, insights. Um, especially, I like the sentence from Lloyd uh, that uh, the quicker you have a data first strategy in place, the quicker you will be able to implement AI. I think that's definitely true. And also, the insights provided by Niklas um, with, uh, of course, maybe transform yourself more or transform your mindset more into a, towards a product related um, um, thinking. Um, as well as trying to leverage uh, the benefits by make, making using of uh, the, the technology. This is definitely a good, good starting point. And of course, you have to be aware of your data points you have already and what kind of data points you are able or you would be able to collect in future and then try to combine it and, and structure and cluster it and then make use of it somehow. Yeah, so thank you for, for the insights so far. Okay. Um, anybody else from the audience with some additional questions? And feel free to uh, unmute yourself and um, ask a question that you may want to ask.
By the way, we got the, the responses there to the Mentimeter is, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty clear, right? In terms of uh, uh, if AI can be effectively applied to agile. So it's um, the majority says yes, right? So I think uh, from the previous poll, right? I think uh, the view is, at least that's my interpretation that, um, yeah, waterfall traditional methods uh, would benefit probably more from AI uh, than Agile, but it doesn't mean, I think it comes back to you, Peter, what you said at the beginning, but it doesn't mean that AI cannot be applied to Agile, but uh, there are some caveat to it, or maybe it's not, it, it still needs to be uh, detailed further, right? I, I think it's fantastic. It, it, it feels like there's been a shift from the beginning of the conversation to the end. Um, which, which I, I think, you know, certainly from my perspective and, and I think Nicholas as well, I think, you know, that's what we're basically saying, you know, that we think it can be applied to agile and project management. Yes, it is more complicated and yes, it might take longer, yeah. but, you know, the conclusion certainly that I think we're proposing is that yes, it can be applied. And I, I even think, I mean, just kind of going, I mean, kind of Peter, you know, the field, et cetera, you're coming from. I mean, I, I really look at the benefits of AI, you know, from, from an investment into a product or a project perspective. I think, I mean, there's, there's so much to get out of it, right? I mean, there's, there's such an advantage of, of applying kind of the AI technology, you know, rolling up the individual tasks on, on a, you know, of an entire portfolio and looking at it over several years historically, that you're going to start seeing, you know, certain trends kind of materializing when you can lay that across. I don't know, the the, the cost component or the the user friendliness of it or user feedback of these products. I think there's just an insane amount of of benefit from a an investment perspective, from you know, from a senior management perspective, you know, putting it down. And I think that's probably going to be one of the more interesting areas, and and probably you know the reason why you know the large institutions will you know start going this direction, right? I, I think it is huge yeah, potential. I agree huge. completely. Um, I, I I think, you know, to Lloyd's point, I think it, it, the, the key thing that struck with me was that data first uh, piece, because that, that's what it all comes back to, to me, whether we're agile or waterfall, it, we're, we're so dependent on that being um, usable um, in the context of AI. Um, and I, you know, there is a lot of work going on in that space. I know you guys, like I said earlier, are all in that space looking at, the, you know, you've got your products that are doing this work. Um, and I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting, very interesting to see how this evolves at uh, larger scale. Um, five you know, years ago, people were deleting data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we're, 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 you know, we are the... Um, the spades and shovels or the pickaxes of uh, the gold rush of uh, <laughs> the turn of the century in San Francisco, right? We, we don't necessarily deliver the projects, but we can make them go better and easier and, and faster and cheaper, et cetera. Um, it's the, the tool set um, that it will be significant going forwards. You know, it's uh, there, there was the cartoon that used to go around of the, 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 the machine gun being presented at the the battle where they're all fighting as knights um and the, the guy turning around and saying no no i'm too busy to talk to you it's like hold on a minute um you know it's uh we're those next generation of um sort of really advanced tools um that will make a significant difference as they evolve absolutely i, I agree with that piece and that goes back to your point earlier about it being early in the life cycle you know when we started uh, two and a half, three years ago, I can tell you we were virtually the only voice in this space. Having recently reviewed the market, you know, I'm 20, 30 companies in this space. You know. And I, I sorry, uh, sorry, Lloyd, I was just going to say, very similar to Giles and I've worked in large organisations where they have these big enterprise tools, you know, the Microsoft Project Server, the Clarities, all of those big names that are out there, right? And yet, my own survey that I did at um, sort of across 30 or 40 project and program people um, only a, a few years ago, um, over 95% of them are still actually delivering their projects out of Microsoft Excel. And then once a week, they come paste it into the enterprise system because they have to. 
not I, because I, they get any benefits and it's given the benefit back that i'm I, interested I, in. I, I get that peter and i totally agree and i have a similar ex experience but for me you know in good old project management terms recognition is the first step so if people are starting to recognize this this opportunity they're starting to recognize the challenge then you're going to start doing stuff about it and that's certainly what we're seeing you know, I that, think we're, 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 we're evidence to that, yeah. <laughs> exactly, we're all sitting here talking about it, you know. So, you know, as we all know, PMI, APM in the UK uh, are, are constantly talking about this subject now as well. So, so you know, it is early. There's going to be a, a lot of market displacement over the next few years, if that's not a made-up word, you know, as, 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 as companies come together or... or split this this at the, at the moment this this it's the domain of a lot smaller companies and yes there's n plan and i'm sure there's one or two others who may be leading the way in certain certainly from a financial point of view but there's there's, there's a long way to go yet i would have thought in this this market okay we are, we are almost done um just you know just some final word maybe quick one from everyone you know uh Looking at the title, applying artificial intelligence to agile projects, does it deliver tangible benefits? Just some final word from everyone, maybe, on that uh, question. Definitely, Peter? yes. <laughs> so, around. Marcus, Peter? just a, a quick bit of input, if this is okay. Um, one of the things I'll think about with the agile maturity, and you take it along the product development practices, you start to see the benefits of um, kind of like manufacturing PLM those should be realizable from a IT project. So your continuous improvement, your iterations, your ability to get gener to generate greater value and that forecasting of uh, future products, all of those seem kind of very comparable. Anyone wants to add? So I, 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 I think the, the, the point being made there is that there's another market segment that, that is the opportunity to apply AI to it. So, you know, uh, uh, um, I, that was my interpretation, I think, of what was being said there. To, to, to wrap up, Marcus, from, yeah. from, from my, myself, um, it's been a fa fascinating talk and, and, and I think it's really, you know, stirs some, some quite challenging conversations as it were but you know I, I, I again for me there's there's two takeaways what, what, what one that I think by the end of this conversation it, it appears that we've uh, convinced the audience that you can apply AI to agile project management and, and and the second one is that you know from my my perspective you know where do you start you start with that data first strategy yeah. and the quicker you do the quicker the quicker you'll get to the benefits right any last words from your side, Rajan, on that topic? No, I think it was a great discussion. Uh, I think uh, we see uh, there's a lot of open points, but I think uh, AI definitely will uh, make an impact one way or the other to, uh, to Agile in, I think, in the probably, hopefully not so far future. Right. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see the like the adoption, like the early adopters and, and the first movers in this space, because I think they're going to be the ones that are going to benefit, uh, you know, in the long run, right? Okay. All right. Well, then uh, I think we are wrapping this up here. Um, it's yeah, we're already one minute past you, but I mean, thanks everyone for tuning in uh, and uh, we hope that was somewhat, somewhat insightful and please don't forget as uh, we have also a, a meetup next month uh, with Paul Boudreau on the power of artificial intelligence for project management so we continue the discussion there uh, and yeah um, if there's any follow-up question from you which we couldn't really uh, address and please feel free to put it in the group chat there in on the meetup page and uh, we try to get that answered but um, for today thank you very much everyone thanks for the panelists thank you Marcus. Care, guys. Been great. have a good thank evening you, Marcus. Brilliant. Well, good work. bye 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 thank you